So I've got a number of different projects going on in the garage, but today I wanted to focus on a new product from Dingerbilt. Uh, so this is their oil catch can, and I think it's a very clever solution because it takes up some space that was previously unused underneath the seat uh, here on the Grom and provides that oil catching solution that at this point on the bike I need. As you start making more power on the bike and there's more pressure, there's a higher propensity for you to get oil blow by that right now I just have rooting back into the intake, which means it's getting burned up and that's not an efficient process. And that was a great solution for the bike as I started to get into those higher horsepower numbers, but something that I need to install on this bike and a very clever solution from Dingerbilt. I'm actually already running the Dingerbilt intake on this bike and I am running the titanium Dingerbilt intake on my Monkey, which was designed for a Grom, but I was able to make it fit onto the Monkey. Uh, Dingerbilt used to be really focused on the titanium products, uh, but as of late, they've been focused on the additive manufacturing solution. So this is primarily 3D printed. You can see the material that it uses here. Um, and the way that it works is that this side of the tube connects to the crankcase breather port. And so any blow by that you get comes up through the tube, gets caught inside of uh, the chamber here, pressure gets released through this little UNI filter and that otherwise once the pressure is relieved it comes back down the tube and drains into the crankcase. So a great solution this sits higher than the engine so it's easy for it to drain back down. And then we're just going to cap off the port that's currently on the Dingerbilt filter that I'm running. Dingerbilt also sent me this cool 3D printed uh, glare cover so it fits perfectly over the 2022 Grom uh, dash and then again prevents the glare from making it hard to read uh, the information that's being displayed. So this is just something that you can pop on. Uh, it actually won't fit on the Repsol themed bike just because I have some other gauges there in the way, but I'll put it on the Impact Tech stunt bike to uh, show you what this looks like. All right, so first thing we need to do is remove the seat. And the catch can solution is gonna be going right here where there's currently this little uh, pocket. I'm not exactly sure what this is intended for, Actually, on a bike that has ABS, there's an ABS module there. So uh, I'll look on the website to confirm, but my guess is the solution does not, or it seems pretty obvious that this won't fit if you have an ABS module on your bike. Okay, so now I know what that dead space was for. Uh, there's just two Phillips head screws here that we're gonna back out. And then this slides out. We use the same screws that actually just fit through these two holes. Uh, and so, I'll file down the tube that will get situated later. So that's it from an insulation perspective uh, here under the seat at least. Uh, from here we need to now route the other side of that hose into the crankcase breather port and then cap off the intake port that the hose was previously going into. Okay, so I should put the bike up on the lift but I have another project on there so a rear stand will have to work for now. Uh, here's the other side of the tube that's coming down that we're going to connect to the engine case port which is right back here. And over here we're going to remove the tube that's going into the intake. The kit comes with a plug that will plug it up and uh, a little zip tie to keep it secure. Let me show you more closely. So this is the hose that was going into the intake that I'm gonna pull off and plug. And it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get to because the breather tube is back here. I'll go ahead and take off this triangle so that uh, we hopefully have better access to it. All right, so you can get a better look at where the hose is going to be going to. It's uh, right there is where we're connecting the new hose. And then this side again is getting capped off. I'm gonna go ahead and cap that off first. Here's the cap that they provide and it just fits over this. And then I'm gonna zip tie it here to keep it secure. Actually, I could probably, could probably reuse this. All right, that looks good. And then it's gonna be a lot harder to capture how I remove this, but it has the same little clip just on the other side. So 
I think with some needle nose pliers, I'll be able to move the clip off and then just slip the whole hose off. All right, and so this is what's left of my stock hose. I had actually cut it down quite a bit as I put on the um, intake. So now I'm just going to, let's see, I don't want to route it around. I think I'll kind of push it this way and loop it back. I don't know, maybe I do just wrap it around. That would also prevent it from kinking. And then I just need to get the little clip back on. And I'm sure none of this is getting caught too well on the camera, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's back on. Okay, so that took a little bit of work to get on correctly, but I have the factory clip over the new hose now. The kit also did come with some zip ties if you wanna go the zip tie route. I think that'd be a little bit easier. And then uh, over here, you can see the nipple and then the factory clip sealing it up on the intake side. And then I have the hose uh, wrapped around here. Again, I could have filed it in here and then around, but that would have been a pretty tight turn and I didn't want it to kink. This way it stays uh, a nice big loop and then comes up here to the catch can and the breather filter. All right, so thank you Dinger Build for letting me try this out. Uh, the solution looks great, it fits very well and I'll do a follow-up video on uh, anything I experienced with this, but again, the way that this works, I shouldn't even notice that it's there. I'll just get less oil going back into my filter and being burned in the combustion process. So let me try out that other product, this cover. So uh, it fits just over, again, the instrument panel. Um, I've got a Sport D module here that um, is in the way. So let me get the other bike here in the light and uh, we'll try this on too. Actually, I think the lighting here is good enough to show without moving the bikes around, but it has a cutout here for the key so that it doesn't interfere uh, with that part of the bike. And it has uh, ridges on the inside here that will snap along the seam here, I imagine. So so that's it. It just snaps on that easily. Let me take the camera and show you some of the angles um, how it looks, but the fitment is extremely precise. And again, it blocks the sun from uh, casting the glare on the screen, both sometimes making it harder to read. Also, sometimes I get some reflection into my eyes off of this. So I'm assuming that from certain angles, it helps with that as well. I assume it also provides a little bit of a windscreen effect too, as it shoots uh, air up off of it, but looks pretty good. I've got my CT70 here in the way a bit, but you can get a good idea of what it looks like. So I will link to this product as well. Thank you, Dinger Bill, for letting me try out both of these products. I'm particularly excited about this oil catch can that I now have on my Repsol themed bike. There are links in the description below. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. Stop watching YouTube and go wrench on or ride your bike.